Hey everybody, welcome back. Today is a day to see how much I can cram into one video. Hey book friends, welcome back. So today is going to be a combination video of my January wrap up as well as my current library pile. I haven't done a library pile in a while and my January wrap up is actually pretty short because I haven't actually read a lot of books this month so I thought I would just combine the two. So like I said before I didn't actually do a lot of reading in the month of January mostly because I ended up actually moving. As you notice I am in a new location and that is because I moved. I moved back in with family um, for various reasons and it ended up being a really really good decision and a really good move. I have my own little like office nerdy geek den down here. It's my own little library. I have a desk where I can edit my videos on now. So it did end up being a much better move and I'm in a very happy position where I am. So because I was moving, I ended up not reading as much as I would like. So the grand total of my reading for January was three books read to two books DNF'd. So let's start with those DNF books and get them out of the way. So sadly, the first book I DNF'd was actually Ice Like Fire by Sarah Rush. And I told you in my favorite books of 2015 video that Snow Like Ashes was one of my favorite books of 2015. It was gripping, it got a great storyline, it had me interested, it had fantastic world building and really strong characters. In Ice Like Fire, it was the content that I ended up DNFing it for. The content in Ice Like Fire kind of shot up from a mild to moderate to a straight moderate content rating. There wasn't like graphic or in-depth detail, but you had a strong understanding that there had been an orgy, that people were running around naked, that there was flashbacks to uh, attempted rapes and other such things. Very strongly alluding to that your imagination could still picture what is going on. And there was a good chunk of the book that was taking place in a brothel and all our main characters were invited to what was pretty much a giant orgy party type thing. So it was a little too much for me for the sexual content so I ended up sadly DNFing the book which honestly I was kind of disappointed about because I wanted to see what the rest of the series would be like but I'm kind of okay with that now. I've come to peace. I've come to terms with it. I will be okay. So sadly, Ice Like Fire got The second book I DNF'd was Black Dove, White Raven by Elizabeth Wine. Now, Codename Verity and Rose Under Fire were two of my all-time, if not my second and third, favorite books of 2015. And so I wanted to continue reading Elizabeth Wine's writing. And this one I DNF'd out of sheer boredom. It was just... I was almost halfway through the book and nothing had happened yet and I was just it was a beautiful story and it was well written but there was just nothing to draw you and to pull you into this story I had a hard time connecting and falling in love with these characters and just wanting to know what happened to them I don't mind anticlimactic or slow moving stories that don't have a whole lot of action if I can invest in the characters and I found myself not being able to invest in these characters like I could in Codename Verity or Rose Under Fire. I might pick up Black Dove White Raven in the future but for now it's on my DNF list. So now on to the books I did read. The first book I read was The Mountain Midlife by Lori Ellis Ex. Eeks, I think is how Sarah Ella pronounced it, so that's what I'm going with. So by Lori Alice Eeks, and it was a copy sent to me by review by the Fiction Guild, which is through Thomas Nelson Zondervan Publishing, so I got it sent for review, and I actually ended up enjoying it. I did a full review, which I will link up in a card or in the description box down below that you can go check out. So like I said in my review, this book kind of surprised me. It's definitely not one I would have picked up on my own, but I ended up enjoying it. It had that connection and that grit to kind of keep you going to find out what happened. I really needed to find out what happened in this book. Like even after I put it down, I had to pick it up again 
and figure out what was going to happen and kind of I felt like I was trying to push the characters to get going so we can figure out what was happening. So it had a really good drive to it and it pleasantly surprised me. I did start out giving this book a two star rating on Goodreads, but I bumped it up to a three star rating because I ended up, like I said, not being able to keep it down for long. So it, I bumped it up to a three star rating because it definitely earned it. The next book I read was Paper Hearts by Meg Weaviot. Weaviot? I, again, am awful at name pronunciation, so I'm very sorry to any authors whose names I completely ruined. But Paper Hearts was actually a birthday present to me. A friend of mine and I go out for coffee once a week, and she wanted to buy me a book for my birthday. And at first I wasn't too sure of what I wanted, and we were just kind of browsing through shelves. And I saw this one, and what drew me to this one was the texture of the cover, believe it or not, and the cover, because these are kind of, they feel like stitches. And then I ended up opening this book and seeing inside the dust jacket was purple and shimmery. And it was just a really pretty book. And then I noticed this, so I thought it was like a World War II book, which it is. So at first I was like hemming and hawing about getting it. And then I spilled coffee on it in the bookstore while I was looking at it. So we bought it. We saw it as a sign that I should get this book for my birthday because I would hate to be that person to pick up and find in the bookstore that somebody had spilled coffee on a book. So he bought it. <laughs> and thus my channel name is Coffee and Chapters. Just, just kidding, I don't spill coffee on my books on a regular basis. But thankfully, aside from the coffee spill, I did thoroughly end up enjoying this book. It was a book written in verse, so it's all written in poetry and verses. It is a World War II era book and it is based on true events and real people. This is about two girls and you kind of follow each of their stories and they put the title of who you are currently reading the story of on the top of each section and you read each girl's story of how they got to Auschwitz, how they met each other, and what they were going through together. And the main story of this book is that while they were in camp, they were becoming friends, they were becoming each other's family, and one girl noticed that the other girl's birthday was coming up, or at least they thought it was, it was kind of hard to tell time, but one girl was going to be celebrating a birthday soon, and having paper and pen and stuff like that was very dangerous to have. So the girls gave up bread rations, gave up other things, and tried to come up with paper and pens to make this girl an origami heart birthday card and it's just an endearing story about what is truly important about strong friendship and about survival. I will also be doing a full review on this book so I don't want to go too much more into it. I did give it a four star rating and I ended up reading it in one setting. I read it in one night. It was good. I wanted to know what happened. It dragged me on. And of course it was written in poetry so it was a really fast read because there wasn't a lot of word on the pages. But even with the less words, there was still a very strong, impactful story told. But like I said, I'll be doing a full review on this, which I will link in this video when I have it finished or down below in the description. So be on the watch for another book review. The next book I read, I kind of picked up on a whim from the library. I had seen it last year around booktube quite a bit, and it had very strong mixed reviews. With this book, you were either in two camps. You either enjoyed it and really liked it, or you absolutely hated it. So I was interested to see what all the fuss was about with The Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. I picked it up out of the library and I read it and I have to say I can see why there was two strong camps. I'm kind of in the middle, believe it or not. I actually ended up really enjoying this book just for its entertainment value and what was going on. I also did enjoy that it was a mild content. There was a few B words, but that's about as strong as it got in the language. It was graphically violent and the reason for that is it's about two different blood types. So you have the silver bloods and the red bloods and you kind of see the difference in that. So the violence, and there's a lot of bloodshed but it was very poignant to the story to see the differences between the two blood types. So this follows a girl who is actually a red blood and grows up in a very poor condition. 
she's a pickpocket. She's about to turn 18 and everybody who is turning 18 and does not have a job or an apprenticeship is going to be conscripted into the army to fight the battles at the front. All three of her brothers have gone to the front so she knows it is inevitable that she will be going as well. However, events happen that lead her right in the center of the silver court and she ends up discovering that she has abilities similar to what the silvers have. The silver blood people are the rulers and the elite and they have these certain abilities. So some can grow greenery, some can manipulate water, the royals can manipulate fire. So each of them have these abilities and she discovers that being a red blood, she actually has this. So that kind of throws in some cool court drama and some other things. Now the reason the strong camp of hating and not liking this book is because it is very similar, there is very similar tropes, there's very similar moments, and there's almost, I don't want to say it, but there's almost like copycat like instances in the book where you're reading this and you're like, this is really making me think of another popular dystopian YA book. And I don't really want to like hint too much about what it was, but it was just, there's moments where I'm like, yeah, I've read this before. It kind of lost a little bit of an originality there for me, but what it lost on originality, it kind of made up for an entertainment sake. And so I'm interested to see how the rest of the series is going to go. It sounded really interesting. And, and like Jesse the Reader said it really well that she really likes to make her characters suffer. So you kind of want to see what happens to them. So I'm interested and I will be picking up, I think it's called The Glass Sword. I think it's coming out next month. So I will be picking that up once my library gets it. So those are the books I read and DNF'd in January and what I thought about them. Like I said, as always guys, you can just comment down below if you want more information about books if I don't do a book review of them, or you can even request a book review. You can also ask me why and how I rate content in books and I will be more than happy to share that with you. The second part of this video, I just wanted to show you guys real quick what I have currently out from the library. So as you can see, I have a bit of a problem. It's not stay. It's not a bookshop problem, it's a library problem. I see a book in the library, I grab it, I want to take it home and read it. I made a goal for my 2016 goals to read more books that I already own and have on my shelves and finish those before I maybe get more new books. And then I end up coming home from the library with this. So we'll see how that goal is going. But these were just really interesting books that I wanted to get to early in the year. Some of these are new, some of them I haven't even heard of on booktube, so I wanted to kind of take a look at those. The first book is Seeker by Arwen Ellis Davies. I have only seen this once on booktube, and that was Jesse the Reader had this very briefly mentioned on his channel. He didn't do a review or a wrap up of it yet, so I don't even know if he's read it, but other than just seeing it on Jesse's channel, I haven't actually seen it anywhere else. So I was kind of curious, I know it is a fantasy novel, I don't know too much more about it to kind of describe it to you but the synopsis sounded interesting and it might be one that I want to pick up and give it a try it's not one I wanted to invest in because I haven't heard too much about it but I will definitely give it a shot from the library the next book is Da Vinci's Tiger by L.M. Elliot this was part I think of one of the YA subscription boxes lately. I saw a lot of people doing unboxings for this one and Kayla Rain did a very good uh, review of this book on her channel and it sounded really interesting. And I just happened to see that my library had recently acquired it so I picked it up as well because I wanted to see what everybody was talking about and a lot of people gave some really good solid reviews of the historical novel and I love historical fiction so I wanted to pick it up and take a look. It is about this girl who becomes a muse for da Vinci. I believe she is the a subject of his first painting so she kind of gets involved in that as well as some court political drama, historical drama I think it was, with the Medici family. So it's got some strong historical backgrounds. This is just kind of what I picked up out of Kayla Rain's review which I will also link somewhere here to go check out because it was a really good review and it made me want to pick this book up. The next book is another renaissance time period and it is The Prince of Shadows by Rachel Kane. This is a Romeo and Juliet novel. So this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling from I think it's 
It is a Romeo and Juliet retelling from Benvolio's point of view. Now Benvolio is expected, like all the boys are expected to fight for the honor of their houses and if they survive, marry well kind of thing. And Benvolio knows this, he would fight for his cousin Romeo's honor if he has to. But to kind of live his own life, he also becomes the Prince of Thieves kind of in Verona. And so while he's doing that and stealing from the Capulets, he meets Rosalind. So it kind of is a Rosalind retelling from the shafted lover of Romeo. So I wanted to check it out. I was just perusing my library, saw it lying on like a recommended shelf. So I grabbed it. I, I hadn't heard too much about it and I wanted to check it out. The next two books are kind of indirect recommendations from some of my booktube friends. The first one being The Strange and Beautiful Sorrow of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. This one was inadvertently recommended by Casey over at A Basket Casey Reads. This was one of her favorite books of the year and she kind of recommended for anyone to pick it up. So I wanted to pick it up and take a look at it and see what I thought because Casey and I have very similar reading tastes. So I thought, why not? Let's see what all the buzz is about. The next one I picked up, I do have a physical copy of it, but it is an interlibrary loan, so it's got a big, um, ugly plastic thing on top of it with my library's and town's name right on it, so I'm not going to show you guys, but I'll insert a graphic here. It is Jacoby by William Ritter. This was also indirectly recommended by Sam over at Novels and Nonsense, and it is blurbed as Sherlock meets Doctor Who which Sam and I are fans of, and I love anything to do with Sherlock, and of course, if you throw in a Doctor Who element in there, I am kind of interested. So Sam was talking about it on our channel, so I thought I would get it. So I got it on an interlibrary loan to check out and see what I thought about it. So those are the books I will be reading, maybe not all of them, in the month of February, and those are the books I read in January. So as always guys, thank you so much for watching, happy readings, and I will see you all next time. Bye!